FSLTL, in my opinion the best AI traffic add-on for Microsoft Flight Sim has been updated to version 1.2. In today's video I'll be giving you a rundown of everything that's been included in this update, talking about my experience with it and showing you off all the new features. Without further delay let's get right into it. Ok so first off to install it, it is incredibly easy, head over to the FlyBarWire installer and just click on the FSLTL base injector and you'll be able to update it from there, you should see an orange update button. Click on that and within a few seconds it should have successfully updated. Head over to your Microsoft Float Sim community file and verify everything is all there as expected. If it's not in your community file then obviously it hasn't installed properly or updated properly so just make sure it's in there. Then all you need to do is load up Microsoft Flight Sim as per normal and for those of you that haven't tried FSLTL before you can go into your traffic settings via the settings menu and turn Microsoft Flight Sim's AI traffic to off. You don't need that on for FSLTL to work. Then as per usual you can just load up into your favourite aircraft as an airport you want to fly from and then just head it back into the fly -by wire installer or wherever you've put the .exe and start up the FSLTL injector. And there you have it, you've basically got it up and running. All you need to do is press enter and as I showed you on my last video, you should see traffic start to pop up. Now this is where version 1.2 comes into effect because from this point on if you want to change some of your settings you don't actually need to head back into the injector. You can just head into the integrated menu which you can find in Microsoft Flight Sims toolbar. As you can see on my screen plenty of settings have now been put onto this toolbar as opposed to you having to go back into the injector. Of course it makes it a lot more seamless for most people and of course these settings will save every time you close and open Microsoft Flight Sim again so you don't need to worry about heading back into the menu to adjust it every time before you fly. So that's one very nice update, being able to change things like IFR aircraft density, VFR aircraft density, despawn time and everything you can see on the screen is a very big plus. But now let's talk about some of the more hidden features in this update. Okay, so we'll start off with something that should improve your performance if you use it right. The FSLTL team have adjusted how aircraft spawn. So when you're flying on the ground, 50% of the aircraft FSLTL injects in will spawn on the ground, with the other 50% spawning in on the air. This of course means when you're taxiing around and taking off, you'll see plenty of parked up and moving aircraft on the ground. Now once you start to climb, and climb above 10,000 feet, this ratio will change. It means that 75% of the aircraft will now be in the air, with the remaining 25% left on the ground. This means, of course, despite what you set your IFR or VFR aircraft limit to be, you'll see more aircraft in the sky and less aircraft on the ground. Go above 20,000 feet, flight level 200 and this will swap over to 100% of your aircraft in the air, excluding static ground traffic. Now this means you won't see any moving aircraft on the ground, they'll all be in the air, but to be fair, you're at 25,000 feet, so you wouldn't really be seeing them anyway. Now this means you can actually lower the amount of aircraft you have, um, whether that be IFR or VFR, and you can still see pretty much the same amount, because of course it's not evenly split on the whole anymore or whatever the previous ratio was. It means that if you're flying high, you'll only see aircraft in the sky, which to be fair is where you need to see them, and if you're on the ground, of course, it will be an even split. It's a pretty ingenious solution because it means while you're having exactly the same amount of traffic, numerically, you're seeing it where you want to see it. Now this may mean your skies feel a bit busy, so feel free to lower it down either by going into the inbuilt toolbar menu or the injector. And of course, as you lower the amount of aircraft down because you're seeing too many or you've got a good balance, 
your performance will improve because your CPU is under less stress. A very, very good solution and a fantastic update to see. There's also some other things added with this update. I've already talked about the InSim toolbar being greatly expanded. This will have real-time effects. So if you're sat there looking at a big airport and seeing plenty of traffic on the ground, you move those sliders about and things will change right in front of your very eyes. No need to reset your injection and then inject again. On top of that, model matching has seen a massive improvement in terms of how fullbacks work. FSLTL will first choose its products as priority. This means FSLTL models and liveries will be selected first with the software attempting to match it up to Flight Radar 24 data. If that's not possible, for example, with A380s and you've still got some AIG models installed or some other products like Aerosoft's Simple Traffic, then the fullback will move over to that way. So theoretically, you could see plenty of aircraft types because to be fair, the one limitation of FSLTL is that some aircraft types don't exist within the software just yet. So you'll always be able to fall back on other AI traffic software in this case. And then finally, if there's none there, which to be fair, I cannot think of a single aircraft that would fall into that, except maybe some smaller private jets and regional jets. Then it will go over to a default or base blank aircraft or blank livery. Now that's fantastic because it means if you've got your favourite models installed via AIG and you don't want to get rid of them, simply put, you don't have to. So do feel free to complete them. Aside from that, some other smaller changes. The injector will now show conflicts, allowing you to troubleshoot better. And if you fly in Europe and use default ATC, FSLTL should now have better ATC phraseology with the correct call signs being used for some airlines and some aircraft. So that's very nice to see. All in all, a fantastic update. The highlight to me would be the fact that they've basically sorted out the ratio of aircraft on the ground or in the air. That definitely improves performance for me. I know deep down the FSLTL team do have a bit of an uphill battle with performance because they're still relying on a lot of Microsoft Flight Sim's default dynamics. But with an improvement like that, it means you can reduce the numbers via the injector and hopefully see a big improvement at a minimal loss. So it's great news. You can find their Discord and their website in the description. One thing I forgot to say as well, with the new ratios, aircraft will now also prefer to spawn in front of you when you're in the climb as opposed to behind you. That once again is a performance thing because if aircraft is spawning in behind you, chances are you're not really going to see them. So you might as well take your numbers down and prefer for them to spawn in front of you. So it makes complete sense in that regard. From me today, that is all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to the FSLTL team. Version 1.2 is fantastic. I look forward to many more updates. From me today, be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the most important Microsoft Flight Sim news, add-ons and reviews and some aviation content as well. My Amazon affiliate links for all the stuff I use to fly, film and edit are down below. Have a good one guys. Bye bye.